Okay, everybody, we are literally half a day, I guess, uh, advanced from the previous segment. So Mark started out learning foundation of footwork, learning, you know, foundation of how to hold the release properly, some grip work, and then just worked on the string. We've had multiple segments where he's been working with the string and just understanding those, having some time to think about it, picking it back up, trying it later. Again, if you're a new student, I really can't enforce enough the importance of not rushing through this process. Um, just really focusing on the importance of the anchor position first, learning how to let off the safety and pull through that release properly is so critical because one of the first things people do inevitably once they get their bow is they forget about the anchor and they're just trying to look through the peep sight and front sight and everything else starts to fall apart once you get your bow. So you have to think about these principles. So to pick back up, I'm going to give Mark his bow here in a minute, but I wanna go ahead and just watch him a few more times and let you all see what we're working on. I'm gonna make a few shots and then we're gonna go ahead and step into his first shots with a bow. So let's see how you do, big guy. Right. Good. Now before you make this next shot, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna do something so that you can feel what I'm talking about more than trying to think about what I'm talking about. So if you just look towards the target right now, with your release hand, here's me pulling my release back, right? Mm -hmm. I want this index finger here and I want your middle finger here. Okay. If it's here, this is different. That's if it's on, if this index finger is on the side of your jaw, that's different. So as soon as you come back, this first index right under that jawline, middle finger will be right above. Okay. Okay, that's absolutely critical. All right. And you're look again, does it look right? Meaning you're mirroring. And then as soon as that bow stops, does it feel right? Am I bringing that index finger to the bottom of that jawline? Not under the jawline, not where my middle finger is on the jaw, like this, mm -hmm. not middle finger down here, not index finger above the jaw, right under. This one's relaxed right above. All right. Good job. Nice. Okay, that was way better when it came to like your head position, your anchor position. This time what I want you to do is when you let off that safety and you start your pull, as soon as it goes off, the shot's not over. I want you to keep pulling, and when the shot goes off, I want you to think about pulling your release hand over your shoulder. Okay. So following through. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Let's put this finger in the right oh, position. Oh yeah, I was, I was trying to hold this yeah. string in place. Just thumb off the safety slow and smooth. There, much better. Yep, much better. Go ahead and give me two more, just like that. Looking to be able to compound, you know, this is a positive. That was probably the better shot that I've seen so far. So if we can imitate that, a couple more times and he's gonna be ready to, to start with the bow. Nice. See the strings in a way better place. Good job. There, good job. All right, one more. Give me one more. Nice. That was your best shot so far. <laughs> Congratulations, right. man. You've Thank graduated you. to- I have graduated. Uh, I mean, a piece of wood and a string to 
Now some expensive aluminum, mm -hmm. glass, carbon, and metal. And, and it's the right color. And Dyneema. <laughs> yes. Kick screen. Right. Suck it, suck it poison. <laughs> all right. All so right. all we're going to do right now is we're at approximately seven yards, everybody. So seven yards, Mark. None of these dots are relevant. The center of the target is like all this is your safe zone. So one of the things that I talked to Mark about, um, Mark is a master diver. So I talked to him about times where he might be underwater and he's trying to capture a photo of something and current is naturally moving you around, but you're not trying to like fight current, right? You're just kind of letting it move you so that you can sustain position. So I want you to not fight what your front pin's doing, like floating. Okay. I don't want you to get stiff to like hold on a spot. Like okay. right now I want you just to, you know, if this is your general focal point, if you're moving around within these squares, I'm totally cool with that. Okay. I'm just wanting you to focus on the principles that we talked about specifically okay. with the string that we trained with for the last half of a day. Okay. There's your arrow. Yep, put your arrow in the holder, flip it up, perfect. Okay, so what's the first thing that you're gonna think about before a shot? Feet. Great job. So get your feet where they need to be. The second thing that we talked about was grip. Um, front hand on your bow. So I'm wanting you to, to always keep this bow in this fashion right here, okay? So whenever you're holding your bow or handling your bow, mm -hmm. you can rest it on the inside of your leg. Mm -hmm. You can rest it here if you would like. Okay. But I don't want your bow to be working this way or this way or upside down like this. Learn from the beginning to function just like these are your shooting lanes. So imagine if you're at an archery shop and someone's right here and they're shooting too, you tipping this bow like this to load it is gonna be problematic. Right. So learning to work you know, within your lane is really important and it also really hate, helps um, just fluidity and efficiency. So your bow is really gonna travel from a resting position here where like right now you're relaxing your front shoulder, which is really important between shots. After your shot, set your bow, rest it down, relax that front shoulder. If you're like this all the time, I don't know if with a guitar, if you're always you're like get this. Tired. Yeah, so like utilize the strap, right? You know, uh -huh. let it hang down. So that's what you're doing here. And maybe when you teach, you know, guitar or whatever, you know, playing in a fashion where like, if it's getting way out here, it's probably, I don't know, maybe you do jam it's out. probably not good. Well, I've seen you kind of get out there like that. <laughs> so that's probably not a good example, but I want you to be efficient here. So, you know, this is your space Okay. right here, three o'clock <clears> to six o'clock. Try not to invert. Okay. So just work within those means. Okay. So when you're in this position here and your bow is on your leg, now you can look at your grip and kind of envision like I'm going to hold it right now, but envision telling it to stop like we talked about earlier mm -hmm. and gotcha. make sure you don't cross over that part. So right about there is okay. good. All right, cool. Got an arrow on the rest. Mm -hmm. And for those of you watching, I've backed this bow down. Um, this is a pretty important uh, principle to talk about. So I talked to Mark when we were discussing what poundage he could shoot. When I had an archery shop, one of the things that I would do is I would have people sit in a chair when they'd buy a bow and see if they could draw that bow back in a seated position. And if they can, then that poundage is right. So Mark is elected to start at a lower poundage bow, which I think is absolutely wise, to where he can not have to contort his technique in order to draw the bow all the way back. So being able to kind of mimic what he's doing with the string, Obviously he's got more force. He's gonna to have to pull the bow back, 
But if he's really having to change hips and sky draw and all that stuff, it's just, it's gonna make it very difficult for you to learn proper archery. So make sure you have a poundage that's, that's gonna be usable. Um, for Mark, we've actually backed this down. So hopefully right now he's able to draw more comfortable. And if you're new to archery, you should fully expect this to seem really hard to pull back at first because it's a coordination and a muscle technique that you really haven't used in any other type of sport. So I tell people like, if you've ever learned certain weightlifting movements, there's times where it's, you're not doing hardly any weight and it's not because you can't actually move the weight, it's because you don't know the proper technique to move it with the right muscle coordination. So you should expect that as a new archer um, so start with lower weight and it'll really help you progress. Okay, so we've got stance, mm -hmm. grip. Now when you draw for right now, what I think is most important is for you to draw and when the bow stops, I want you to anchor index finger under, just like what I talked about here. This is what I want you to, to feel, the bow stops. Find this first and once you find that, then you can slightly adjust your head to where you can acquire the peep. Okay. Um, we may end up fine tuning that peep sight later, um, but if you're a new archer, don't, don't adjust your anchor to acquire the peep. Find your anchor position, try to get comfortable, and maybe don't even worry about the peep for your first several shots until you start to repeat your process in an archery shop or whoever is your bow mechanic can put that peep in the right position. You're gonna to need to push your glasses back. So if you have glasses and they're down further on the brim of your nose, and if they are a shape to where they're not going a little bit deeper into the, the corner of his eye, which these are, you're gonna find that, that that bridge of your glasses is going to be obstructing that peep and you're going to end up changing your anchor in your head position in order to see through it so when you're shooting archery a lot of people have glasses that are better for acquiring the peep sight when they're in the proper position but for you having them up is going to help you right now okay all right you ready i'm ready let's do it all right finger on the safety hands flat good job There you go. Anchor's good. Perfect. Now go ahead and find that peep. Put the maybe tip of your nose on the string. Great. Right there. I'll lift this elbow a little bit. That's good. Perfect. <laughs> Were you already off the safety and pulling? No. I just the safety was uh it's got very little travel. So okay. <laughs> All like... right. That's perfect. So first arrow, obviously a lot to think about. I probably shouldn't have tried adjusting you and just let you let off and, and start pulling. But good job, man. That Thank you. Right there that is was archery. Awesome. You did it. That was, look at that, it's even, I even hit the target. Yeah, you're in the <laughs> middle, so that's perfect. So here we go, I want you to do another one. All right. Okay. Everything was great for that. Go ahead and put your release on. I'm gonna have you work your, perfect. Yep, I want your bow forward. As a teacher, a lot of times, the nuances of loading the bow and uh, just kind of prepping it, getting it. I normally do that for the students just because I feel like there's a lot of things going on right now. So for CPU usage, even though honestly later on, I'm gonna add steps to the shot routine, but for right now, first arrows, critical things is your stance position so that your shoulders are in the right placement grip position so you're not too far in and bringing your arm into the path of the string and then from there drawing back and anchoring first then acquiring that peep sight those are the key things to think about for right now all right you ready yep i'm ready let off your safety I sure did. <laughs> Let's cancel that and rewind. 
Does, does this have different travel than, uh, than it did before? No. It feels different. I, I'm crazy then, forget it. Okay. You need to squeeze that down. Squeeze it hard, all right. But your hand needs to be like this. Because if I asked you to do a pull up and you were kind of doing it like this, uh -huh. where your hands are relaxed, uh -huh. you're just gonna slip off the bar. Right. So imagine if you didn't have this release and I told you to pull back with your string. If you were just pulling back with a relaxed hand like that, mm -hmm. at 60 pounds, that bow is going to pull itself from your fingers. Mm. So you have to pretend like you're holding onto a wire for dear life. Okay. So you have to, and that's honestly why this safety lanyard is so critical is because learning to hold that release firmly and even though you feel like you're pulling back and it seems comfortable, you have to have your hand secure on the release aid. Okay. Yep. Okay, let me try again. Good job. There you go. I like it. Tip of the nose on the string, good. Low, slowly let off just the safety with your thumb. Now pull the elbow back towards me and keep the elbow coming all the way back and keep going there. That's awesome. That felt good. Yeah, this is actually great. I love the fact that, honestly, I love the fact you had a good arrow first, which was probably something you've been visualizing for mm -hmm. the last 12 hours. And honestly, that second mistake is is something that people do. And it's, it's honestly something where if people let a release slip out of their hand and then they call in and say, I don't know what happened. What happened with you is what happened. When you're trying to think about so many things, you're for the first time drawing this bow back. And this is a new machine you haven't ever pulled. And a lot of people who don't understand archery is it's actually a very graceful sport a lot of people are a little bit intimidated by that and like the power of what a bow can do and they don't realize it's nothing like a gun and when it goes off there's not a lot of sound there's not a lot of vibration mm -hmm. and so when you're thinking about like here's this thing that's getting ready to fire obviously you relaxed and just started pulling back you know honestly with you're probably pulling with these fingers mm -hmm. more, more so, so than, than these the index finger. which is which is kind of what i noticed when i said you know earlier when i've talked to you about yep mm -hmm. doing that so this is all very very good things for people to see okay good to go good job stance is good alignment's great on the bow Always hold your safety down. Good job. Anchor first. Yep, great. Tip, perfect, great job. Slowly let off that safety and then the elbow is just coming back towards me. Great, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, what a great feeling that yeah, is. Yeah, come check this out, everybody. So, you know, we're sitting here, and, you know, here's Mark's first three arrows. Obviously, this is one. That was the accident. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I can tell a difference. Um, I can tell a difference when you're pulling back now, you're truly holding the safety. And that's one of the things that the, the shot trainer, because you're not drawing with full force from the beginning to the end, that's one of the things that with the shot trainer, you don't really learn. And as you use it more, like when I use it, I'm so used to just knowing how to, once I put it, my D loop onto the release, I just know how to hold the release so that I can actually come to my tension without having to change my finger position. Mm -hmm. And you've never done it. So these no. are just small little things mm -hmm. to where, you know, someone learned a guitar the first time, they probably like, put a pick and the fret's really weird and you're just like dude just grab it and stick it in there yeah usually it's holding the pick is the yeah is the exactly issue with, with very similar yeah. thing so i'm gonna pull these arrows and for those of you watching let's go back and we'll start this again for those of you watching 
If you rewind this to that last shot, you'll actually notice that when he drew back, the first thing he was actually doing was looking for the peep, and you could tell he came back too far, but then he's like, no anchor. Right. There was, there was like this little moment of time where he was about to do what I had talked about becomes easy to do for someone who's now trying to put together a lot of components. Again, starting out your first days, stance, front bow grip, anchor, and make sure you utilize that safety is some of the critical things for you to think about. And that's honestly what we're going to, yes. Yep. Yep. Exactly. So we're going to work on those a little bit more here. And what I want to encourage people at home to realize is sometimes you might pull this thing three or four times and you feel great. And then all of a sudden you start to pull and you realize you're just burnt out and you're spent. So one of the ways to help prevent that is just limit the number of arrows that you shoot before you set your bow down and go pull and come back. So one of the things that I do when I start training again for a new year is I'll actually go down to shooting only four arrows per end. I'll shoot four arrows, walk down, pull, come back, take a little break, shoot four arrows. Um, so for me, I'm giving myself time to rest in between until I build that stamina. Mm -hmm. So if you're new to archery and Mark for you, don't be afraid to just shoot two arrows, go and pull, rest, come back and shoot two arrows. And then if you've got to the point where you really feel comfortable with that, add a third. And then when you get to the point where you're, you're starting to get tired on that third pull, if you want to keep practicing, then take that third arrow away for the next end and just shoot two. So it's going to take, honestly, a short period of time to overcome that initial um, fatigue. It'll, you'll get over it really fast. You'll start to be able to tighten down your limbs really fast and increase your poundage, but just don't go too fast because you don't, like I said, you want to always maintain technique. So when I'm sitting here with Mark, we're going to keep shooting, but when his technique starts to break down or he's struggling and he's starting to shift his hip position or the front shoulder starting to creep up, at that point, I'll be like, let's just take a break. So if you're doing it, you're self-teaching, definite key points that you should always remember. All right. Okay. All right. Part of the reason I just talked so long was because I really wanted Mark to just rest a little bit more. Okay. All right. <laughs> Safety. You got your stance. Front grip looks good. Bow's in line. I love that. Awesome. Anchor first, great. Tip of the nose on the string, perfect. Anchor's great, corner of the mouth, tip of the nose. This is textbook stuff. Let off your safety smooth. Good job, dude. Oh, man. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> There's gonna be a lot of people saying, what in the freak is up with this guy? Been out here a couple hours and ripping <laughs> shots like this. That's, that's awesome. It's only as good as the instruction, John, you know that. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> There's been some people that do not listen. <laughs> All right. Good. Good job. Anchor first. Perfect. Tip of the nose on the string. There you go. That's good. All right. Good job. All right, let's take a rest. On that last draw, you can see he was struggling a little bit more to take a rest or to get to full draw. So we're just not gonna, not gonna push it. You know, we're gonna just shoot two, take a little bit of a break, shoot two again. Um, so we're gonna pull these arrows and I'll come right back after we take a break and I'm gonna give you one more thing to work on. All right. We gave Mark a little bit of a break going to see what five minutes does to his memory. Mm, so far, so rest. good. <laughs> good job. Very important. 
Love that you did that. Yep. Anchor first. Great. Good job. Tip of the nose on the string. Good. Awesome. Good. Real good, man. I felt good. Very good. There you go. Nice. Nice. You did the did the little trough we talked about. There mm. you go. Good job. Good job. Good. There you go. Dang, dude. I'm starting in a different spot. Starting to, get, <laughs> starting to wreck stuff. <laughs> Sell arrows, so I do like that. But. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right then, I could... Did you work on that pull into the slot thing? Were you I, thinking about I was that some? Standing over there doing it on the side, and just uh, it feels real good to, to do that. So you just did it though, didn't you? Yeah, okay. but it, but it, it seems it feels like a like a it's like a something that you can key on, you know. <laughs> so I so I like, kind of oh, told okay. Mark something, even though I was gonna save this. Um, so he was kind of I told him a thing that you can do all the time because again, anchor is critical, and one of the motions that I think just over time and repetition and repetition that you have to learn is if someone just said, where's your anchor now? I just, this is it. Doesn't matter where my hand is. Where's your anchor here? Where's your anchor here? You know, I know where that is and I don't have to waddle into it. Like this is my position all the time. Here it goes. My hands over here, anchor. There it is. So I told Mark, Eventually, you're going to learn that this is just kind of pulling into that track. But I told him, I don't want you pulling along the track yet because what some people do is they're putting too much arrow pressure on their face when they do it because they're digging in too deep. However, if you're just visualizing this movement of drawing back and this separation, tracking that jaw, then you're fine and your head's light on that or zero pressure on the arrow shaft, but very light on the string, then it's perfect. So sometimes the visualization of tracking this separation along that jawline, just like trains, a train on the track, it can help you so that you're not trying to find a place back here. And one of the great things about just having your release aid all the time in your hand and I, at work, I used to carry it all the time. I always had releases in my pocket. It was just the ability to hold it and then just do this. Because always what I want is when the bow stops, regardless of where you have to pull it, this has to happen first, the anchor, and then the head adjusts to acquire the peep sight. So on that last draw, I could tell Mark was actually, I can tell when your brain's thinking up in a different place. <laughs> but I could tell he drew that along that jaw for the first time and he kind of came in and then the string was right there, mm -hmm. which is really good. It's efficient. So that was a, that was a good way to uh, go ahead without me allowing it. Yeah, I probably won't be able to do it again. No, you're definitely gonna screw up now. <laughs> Tip of the nose on the string. There you go. Good job. Perfect, dude. Love it. Three pretty good ones. Yep. And I felt it felt natural again to go. Yep. To go right there. And and that time you drew back, and it'll be cool that you can actually watch back on this. Yeah, yeah. But that time you drew back and you were doing what I was saying, but you it kind of stopped too far because you were kind of coming back. Mm, okay. If you always stand proud and maintain your posture, so I was saying you can shoot small like this, and you can walk around small, or you can shoot proud where you, you know, your shoulders are back, your torso's tight, and you're drawing and the bow's stopping here, and there it is. Or 
you can be small and you draw back and it's here and then now you're having to try to find it. So always having that posture is critical. So I'll let you pull that vicious group you just shot right there. All right, now I'm gonna show you this, Caleb. This is a... So what I talk to people about is with a bow, that bow is gonna always draw and stop at the same. So, I mean, you've got this draw length set to where when you pull it back, it stops. And when it stops, you have a triangle, okay? And it's, it's gonna be the same thing. For me, 31 inches, 31 inches, okay? So if we do what I just said, which if I'm gonna be standing here proud and, you know, let's just say I'm in shooting technique, I'll pretend like I'm gripping my bow and I'm right here, 31 inches in this position, Boom, right here. But let's say that when I draw back, I start to hitch and my front shoulder compresses. So now you can see there's clearly separation, which here's me proud, here's me compact. So I've changed myself several inches just from technique. That bow does not adjust to me deciding to lean back and compress. So now, instead of stop here, now this triangle is now here because it's still gonna stop at the same distance and I've come further back. So now, where's my anchor? And your head position's having to change to find it. And now your peep's at a totally different location and you're trying to find it. So you really have to maintain this T formation. It's just the basic principles of archery of having this shape right here and learning stop, over, draw, stop, over. And these techniques are gonna just increase your opportunity to be more and more repeatable. All right, you can't put them in your pocket because you don't have these cool sick of pants. Cool oh, don't worry, pants. they're coming out. Oh, those are a prototype? Yeah. All right. You'll be able to get them by April finally. Okay, you figure out your brass knuckles. Yeah. I'll load that for you. All right. Stance is good. Love it. Bow, good alignment. Being, he's being super efficient with addressing the target. It's really good. Thumb on safety, nice. Hands flat, good. There you go, nice. Way better, tip of the nose on the string, good. Good job, nice dude, same spot. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna have good. you do this one more time and there may or may not have been some critics watching this saying, oh, what the heck. John isn't telling him to do this. I see it, trust me, I see it. But you can overload or you can choose your battles wisely, and which is what I'm doing. I'm focusing on the key things of building the lowest foundation, which are gonna be more important in the long run than picking on some of the smaller things. So there's certainly a few other things I'll address later. For right now, I want you to do everything that you've been doing. And once you feel like you're in a good position, just keep your finger on the safety and let me make one adjustment before okay. you make your shot. Okay. Good job. Nice. So I'm gonna just lift this elbow a little bit, Mark. There. Now I want you to let off safety and just pull that elbow to my voice. Keep pulling that elbow. Good job, dude. Those are right next to each other. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, can't wait for you to buy more arrows. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah, I can't wait. Keep the it. store busy. Yeah. So your elbow position previously was flat. So you're drawing back, your elbow's low. And when your elbow's low, your ability to feel that anchor point is going to be a little harder. Okay. Because as soon as you lift up, 
you're going to have some pressure there. And honestly, every time you've drawn back and you've done a good job of anchoring, but when your elbow's lower, the string is barely off your nose. Whereas if that elbow was just up a little bit, you'd find that you'd have your anchor, you'd turn your head, and the, and the string would be right there anyway. Okay. Yeah, it's one of the reasons why I really don't like promote having this big thing that lets you have your nose off the string just because it's critical that your elbow's up high enough and you bring the triangle to you rather than floating off the triangle. on the string. Nice. Good job. Great, dude. Well, that was right where I was aiming. Did you aim at the small spot? I did. A little butt nugget. I did. <laughs> I told them not to do that. See? It's inevitable. They well, always you... just be like, I can hit my own freaking arrow on my fifth one, so now I'm going to start shooting Vegas dots. These were pretty close. And then you said, Something about trashing arrows. Oh, okay. So I well, figured, well, all right. I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> let it slip then. I'll let it slip. But that's cool, dude. I mean, honestly, I think for right now, um, I would really like to allow Mark to spend another day for sure just going through these few things that I talked about. And then from there, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to come back and I'll take you into the next step which will be addressing a few more things, which just based on time for us, mm -hmm. I don't know if you're gonna be able to like put them all together because if you're at home and you're learning, if you focus on these things, do the first segment for a week, do that second segment for a week, move on to the next segment for a week, you're gonna be way better off because you're gonna start to ingrain muscle memory and you're not gonna be trying to, you know, think about all these different steps. You know, it's a lot like, Show, being shown all these flashcards and then saying, okay, well, what was the order? Oh yeah. You okay. know, you might Understood. remember what they all are, but then you start to, to, to joggle the order. The order gets fuzzy. So I really just like giving systematic things to where you can work on it, work on it. I see you're doing it, add in one more. Work on it, work on it, work on it. You're adding one more, you're getting it. Maybe another one slips out for a, a day or a couple days. And then you get to the point where it's, you know, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and two or three isn't falling out of the equation. You're still doing them all correctly. Mm -hmm. Then you add five. Mm -hmm. So that's where okay. we're at. Good all job, right. dude. Awesome Great. shooting, dude. Thank you. Amazing.